Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you so much for joining me here today. This dog is very, very, like one of the most reactive dogs I've ever seen in the world. So I got past this dog from one of my other trainers and today we're gonna work on severe dog reactivity. This dog is going insane and it completely ignores the owner on every correction she's given him so far. So I'm gonna break it down and try my best to figure out the best way to effectively, efficiently get this dog in a better state of mind. Okay, so go ahead and heal back this way. Let's try it again. Leave it. Yes. Good. Leave it. Off. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Okay. So, so now what I, I want to be clear on what I'm doing is, is walk again. Yes, buddy. Good. Now walk again. Ah. So stop for a second. So this jumping is something I, I wouldn't to tell your husband or boyfriend or whatever. I wouldn't do this because it's it's a dangerous place for you guys to be. Okay. Because he's in your face and he's okay. reacting. So he could he could come up here, all of a sudden get really ticked off and grab your face out of frustration. Okay. Like he did with you. Yeah. Right? Because you, you become this this wall, this barrier. And if he's here, yeah. doesn't make it a safe place for him. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, um, sit. Good. So I would I would strongly recommend to give him love and affection any other way than this. Okay? Because and the, the the reason why that is 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 if you guys want to do that, that's fine, but you have to understand that the dog is an animal and he's not gonna say, Mom and Dad likes this, everyone else doesn't. Yeah. He's gonna say, This it's is how I was forever. Yeah. It's just like when we teach when we teach manners, right. Yeah. Please, thank you. Exactly. So they're going to do that. With, what do you say? And he's going to go, well, this is what I do. I jump up and I get excited. Yeah. Right? So I would try to step away from this as much as possible. Okay. Um, all right, stop for a second. Well, he's outletting the reactivity he would normally have into something else that's okay. exciting for him. Okay. That's why. So he's basically unplugging the going crazy reactivity and plugging it in somewhere else, which is the jumping. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's the stimulation. So I'm going to heal him a couple different times. I want you to leave it. Heal. Good. Good. Good boy. Sit. Off. Sit. Yes. So clarity, I was very clear, but I didn't correct him at all. I walked him through it. I gave him an opportunity to comply, which is important. Because okay. what you were doing is, you were doing probably what you felt was natural, which is strong, strong dog trying to kill, kill, kill. You were trying to punish as hard as you could, as fast as you could. Not terrible. Okay. However, in this case, you could drop an atom bomb in this dog and it's not gonna stop. You have to get into him mentally in order so because so before I was seeing a lot of like yanking and that just that just revs him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a drunk person aggravated and wants to fight. Yeah. If you push and smack and try to get him out of it, that's, that's what MMA fighters and wrestlers do before they go fight. Yeah. They smack each other in the face. Sit. Good man. Go ahead and walk behind me. Leave it. No correction. So it's a taught behavior. Very good. Okay, great. That's a taught behavior. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not relying on the equipment mm -hmm. to ultimately get the result I want. I'm using the equipment to teach the behaviors I like and what I don't like. Yeah. And I'm using a system called operant conditioning. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is this good? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm loving this. Like okay. I'm Freak. so excited, right? Cool, cool, cool. Freak. Take him and just uh, bring him outside and give him like three minutes to chill yeah. out. Freak. Are you ready, buddy? Ready, go Off. Now we're going to try this with another dog. This is going to be the big test, mm -hmm. for sure. All right, Dad, go ahead. So he's avoiding the dog. Uh -huh. Good. So I want him to be a bit exploratory. 
So he's looking, he's looking. I'm gonna break him. Good boy. That's funny. And rewarding him with food. Good man. Sit. Uh uh. Leave it. Go ahead and walk that way back. And just when you get over to the, leave it. So now I'm using the rope collar on a lower level. helped him get over that hump faster because the correction the correction avoidance avoidance um, that didn't work until we introduced the remote collar and gave him a different type of aversive correction and then it, it and that's why I like using the remote collar for uh, behavioral cases like this because a lot of times if you get a really ticked off dog that's going after through frustration and stimulation um, if you correct them physically and you punch them basically they can redirect on you and it makes things worse. Yes. So using the remote collar for severe reactivity to modify a behavior is the most effective, humane, efficient way. Because you're like, you're, um, and now we just, I want to practice on obedience to make sure you're where you need to be with that. Um, and then continuing to like do group class and coming in working with Morgan again, but making sure that you're fluent with your e-collar, your remote collar, and making sure that your remote collar is of, of good, Manufacturing yeah. value. Yeah, that's it's a twenty dollar one off on Amazon. Yeah. So probably not. But yeah, because <laughs> because so sometimes they like are good um, for a short amount of time, but they're not going to be they're not going to be like consistent, and they can shut off, and they can stop working, and the numbers may not be consistent. So that's why I really suggest people using like a really nice collar. Uh, like in this session, the Dog Drew Two Eighty C. It's small. It's compact. And it's also got a lot of punch uh, for the vibrates. The vibrates really significant. So just using that pager, the dog goes rawr, you go brrr, he goes oh. Yeah. You don't have to pull, you don't have to yank, you don't have to yell, you don't have to scream. It doesn't really affect him in a sense of like getting him more stimulated. It just kind of deactivates the reactivity. Obviously we're working on some uh, barking, right? <laughs> He smells a dog, it's going nuts. I don't need to ignore dogs. You need to be around dogs because obviously our family has dogs. Yeah. Just, I don't care if you don't like them, but you need to not be atrocious. Right, okay. I'm gonna grab another dog out and I just wanna see how the reaction is and I want you to work on your basic obedience. Just let him go see what he, I want to see what he does. Just trying to gauge like what his intentions are here. Oh, good boy. My bubs. I don't like to see any dog choke. I also hate to see a dog be this wound up about a dog that literally isn't even alive. So a lot of times when you get dog reactivity, the main reason for the reactivity is the frustration. The dog just says, I wanna go, I wanna go, I wanna go, I wanna go, and we hold them back, and then they get frustrated. Most times, actually, the leash reactivity isn't aggression at all. It's not stemming from anything mean, it's just stemming from, there's a dog, I'm also a dog, I wanna go see the dog. So if we're using harnesses, flat collars, those are meant to hang on to things. The flat collar is meant for tags, 
Harnesses are meant for dogs to pull. It doesn't actually teach the dog the things that we want them to do. So what I like to do is end the craziness, end the frustration, the reactivity, because you guys can't go anywhere with your dog without him completely freaking out, right? Because for a young dog that's pretty friendly, to be that reactive, it's because of the lack of control on the leash. So it's not necessarily what's out there, it's about the control that we have on the other end of the leash. We need to teach him that the reactivity is not appropriate for him to get over the fact that there is another dog and it's okay for him to be around another dog without reacting. So he has the hesitancy to actually take in information versus just react. Does that make sense? We just got a Herm Springer 2.25 on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start introducing some leash pressure because right now, with or without a dog, he's all over the place regardless of if there's a dog or not because he's on the flat collar, so he's just pulling everywhere, okay? For me, I love dogs so much and I don't want to see them in the state of mind that he's in. My mom won't watch him, obviously. I mean, it's, it's getting to the point of you take him places and people aren't wanting him in. I don't have anywhere else to leave him. I don't want to say, you know, this is your last chance, but it's like, you know, at the same time, it's our lifestyle, you can't act like this. Because yeah. we are on the go. At this point, he's getting left behind. I want to help you guys. I want to help him understand that that's inappropriate behavior. Because even if I did throw a harness and a martingale collar around this dog and I danced around him, I like, treat this, treat this, treat this, calm down. It's okay, it's going to take time. When I hand the leash back to you, this dog's going to go right back to where he's at. It's crazy for, for me to even see people not correct the behavior that we don't like sustainably if you dance around and beat around the bush for weeks or months when i see people training a leash reactive dog for weeks i'm like okay the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results it's been a good a year i mean yeah you know, we tried the whole you see a dog you give a treat he could care less i mean if he's he sees a dog, you're, I can't refocus him for anything. He doesn't care if you have a treat. It's, you know, it's... When you actually understand the canine behavior and where it's coming from, he sees a dog and all these things go off in his head to launch off. You might as well let go of that leash. If your dog is in front of you doing this the whole time, nope, 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 nope. Nope, until the dog's exhausted or until you fast the dog for three or four days and then you give him steak and then they go back to the owner or they go back to there and it's just not sustainable. The dog isn't understanding that the reaction is a bad idea, which hinders the ability for them to get over the actual reactivity and actually intake information to actually understand what dogs mean and what they are. So we're gonna work on that right now. So the first thing we're gonna do, so we're gonna start off with some leash pressure. Heel, good heel. Gage heel, little correction there, heel. So pay attention to me, that's all I'm doing there. Good, heel, good, Gage heel. Good, man. Good, heel. Come on, heel. Good, heel. So I'm just doing some directional changes here, guys. Heel, good, to get him to pay attention to me for the big game when we get a dog out here in a minute. Heel, let's go, heel. Good, good. Sit. Yes, good man. Oh, good man. Good heel. So his leash pressure is looking really nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a real dog out because we've kind of passed that test. We can agree that he barks and reacts to every dog. Yes? Okay. Put a touch. Heel. Interested? I'm okay with that. I'm not asking him not to be interested. Reacting is not appropriate. Good heel. Heel. Good. Watch him, watch him, watch him, good, yes, good boy. You see how he goes, hey, not reacting though. He's making better decisions already because of the control I have. Dogs do not want to be in control. If they're at the end of the leash, bouncing at the end of a harness or a flat collar, they are in the front seat. Doesn't matter if you're, hey buddy, how about we do this? I got some food, how about this? Let's go down here, let's go the other way. All that's just beating around the bush. Like deal with the problem so you don't have to continue this craziness. So now we're gonna advance a little bit. I'm just gonna move her around. Koda, yes. Go touch. Good, uh-uh, sit. Little bit of correction there. I want him to, hey, pay attention to me, dude. Don't worry about her. So he gets up and he's like, ooh, that's interesting what she had. I'm like, sit. He's like, no, correction. 
So he's like, oh, sorry, sorry. When I gave him a correction, all he did was comply. He didn't whine, he didn't jump, he didn't scream. He wasn't like, oh my God, I hate this. He's just like, oh my bad, I wasn't, sorry, what, me? And I'm not yanking on him, he's not choking. Corda, come. Go on. Aus, go on. Yes, go on. Out. Good, and I'm not putting any pressure on him. I want you to notice this, okay? Down. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Go to sit. Good, watch him. <laughs> yes. Good, go touch. Well done. Well done. Okay, buddy, break. Heel. Okay. All right, so I know you said you're not sure if it's a male or a female. We got both a male and a female out right now. Just keep working at your heel. Down. Good. Sit. Heel. Good. Good heel. Come on, crazy bones. Good. 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 Okay, let's go. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Good job. Good job. Good job. Got a touch. Yes. So you get male and female. I don't think it's a matter of which dog it is, what the sex of the dog is. I think it's just a matter of he hasn't been punished for the things that we don't like. That's what it comes down to. You know, it's just like we get a dog in, they're on a flat collar. I personally feel like a lot of dogs who are out of control like that, where they're reactive and they're barking and the owners are like, oh my gosh, this needs to stop. And the dog's friendly as ever. The dog really isn't mean or malicious. They just don't have somebody saying, hey, that's not okay. What are you doing? It's basic principles of operant conditioning and using the science four quadrants of dog training of making sure we're using positive reinforcement when a dog does something we like, and then we're using positive punishment when a dog does something we don't like. So just like when we use positive reinforcement when a dog does something good, for an example, hawk sit, Yes, good sit. We're adding something to the equation to make sure the dog understands what sit is sustainably. We also wanna to try to encourage him to sit again the next time we ask him to sit with or without the food. So it's powerful, right? We say, hey, do something. He does it, we say, yes, good that, and then we pay him. He's like, oh, this is great, this sit thing is awesome. I love this sit thing, right? But then we get into a situation where he does something we don't like. We add positive punishment. Like a lot of people think positive means, oh, it's a rainbow, look, it's, it's a positive experience. No, in dog training, it's a math equation. Positive means you're adding something in. Negative means you're taking something out. When he barks and we react, you're not adding anything to the equation that tells him that that's not okay. Now, some dogs, you can say, hey, stop. And they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. My bad, I won't ever do that again, right? But the reality is, is these dogs are animals. They hunt, they guard, they protect, they chase, they kill, they're not some cuddly little, hey, pay attention to me. The dogs are serious when they want to do something. It's irresponsible to not take charge of a dog that's making themselves literally crazy for reacting, in my opinion. The power of using positive reinforcement for behaviors encouragement, it's just the same exact template we use for behaviors we don't like. So when a dog does something, we say, that's not okay, so we add a correction. And the correction could be anything, guys. It could be leave it, and the dog's like, oop. It could be leash pop, it could be an e-collar correction. It could be just body pressure, like, hey, knock it off, right? If a dog gets out of a sit or something. But the point is, is if you don't teach the dog at the time that they're doing the behavior that it's not okay, they're never gonna get out of it. This is something that we do every single day. Doesn't matter if it's online consulting or in person. But the point is, is if I were to take him, this would have been a lot shorter. It would have been about five minutes and it would have been over. So it's important for any type of professional, especially when you're working with reactive dogs, to teach the owner. Training the dog is the easiest part of dog training. I'm really not in the dog business, I'm in the people business. Because the harder part is being able to teach you. So the mix up of what you're talking about of he's great here, he's great in training, but I'm afraid when we go out there, if we go out there and he reacts, that's because of you.